Hey, welcome back to another episode of Addicted to Gear. Thank you for joining me once again. My name's Tony and I'm Addicted to Gear, as you already know. Today, as you can see, I have a really cool amplifier here beside me. And I'm gonna be talking about this amplifier and going into quite a bit of detail about what it can do. Now, I'm gonna say it right from the get-go, there's a lot of stuff to talk about when we're looking at this great amplifier. So there's gonna be no playing in this particular video, but we will follow up this video with some other videos of actual sound samples. So let's get started. This amplifier, if you don't already know, is a new amplifier that was released by Mesa Boogie. This amplifier is called the TC50, otherwise known as the Triple Crown 50. Uh, I'm a big fan of Mesa amplifiers. I've had plenty in the past. Uh, everything from a Mark III to a Lone Star to a, a Stiletto at one point, an Electrodyne, uh, a lot of different amplifiers from the Mesa line. So I'm quite familiar with the brand. Now the one that I specifically enjoyed the most was the Lone Star and the Electrodyne. I felt that the cleans on the Lone Star were very, very nice. The uh, drive channel on the Electrodyne and the simplicity of the Electrodyne um, was really fantastic. I eventually got rid of it uh, because I had to buy some other gear and uh, regretfully, you know how the story goes, you move on to other things. So when Mesa introduced the Triple Crown, it immediately caught my attention. And the reason for that is because of the features that are built into this amplifier. This amplifier, at least on paper, has it all. It really is a very versatile amplifier and it could, in my book, do pretty much anything you need. So if you're a big Mesa fan, you definitely want to take a look at this amplifier. Now, the amplifier is not cheap. It's uh, well over $2,000. Um, but for the features and sounds you're getting in this amplifier, um, I would say it's well worth its price. The amplifier is a 50 watt amplifier. It's also available in a 100 watt head um, and it also comes in a combo. I decided to go with the 50 watt head just because I already have a couple of different cabinets. I have a 412, a 212, and a 112 uh, with different combinations of speakers in each of them. So I felt that I can pretty much mix and match and experiment to see which type of uh, speaker combination works best with this particular amp. Now the Mesa uh, Triple Crown offers a lot of tonal versatility. It's a three channel amp, so this means it's three independent channels with tone stacks for each. So you basically have a clean channel, you have a low gain and a high gain channel, each of which have a complete set of knobs that you can use to tailor your sound. Now the knobs that uh, you can see here, and we'll start from the right, you have a treble, mid, and bass frequency knob. Then you have a gain, you have a master, and you have a presence knob on the left. Along with that, you also have a switch. And the switch basically switches between normal, that you see here, and drive. So you have two different types of tonal curves that you can actually flick in and out using the little toggle knob. You have an input, you have a clean high and low switch. That's if you don't want to use the foot switch, you can actually switch it here. So the clean channel and the low channel and the high channel essentially all have exactly the same tone controls. Uh, on the left side of the amplifier, you have another two knobs here, which is a solo uh, it's a solo boost knob, so you can actually boost your sound. And you have an output knob, which acts as basically a global master volume. So you basically have, in, in essence, you have like a, a master for each channel, and then you have a global master volume overall, which actually gives you a lot of flexibility tonal, tonally here. Um, you have some nice LEDs that light up here. You have one that indicates the solo, one that indicates when your effects loop is on or your reverb. 
the amplifier actually has a real reverb tank and it's the, I believe it's the same reverb that they were using uh, on one of their other amplifiers. It's a little bit of a shorter reverb tank, but it does sound great. Then you have the normal power and standby switch. So at first glance, you can already start seeing how much versatility the amplifier offers. And if we look at the channels, the clean channel will get you uh, a very admirable clean for a Mesa amplifier. Um, and it's actually very, very, um, I was actually very surprised at how clean you can get the channel to be. The clean channel will also break up, if you bring up the gain uh, to the max, it'll get you on the verge of a really nice edge of breakup kind of tone, uh, still retaining the focus of the clean channel. So it's a great channel if you're using strats, uh, Les Pauls, if you wanna drive the amplifier a little bit and use the, the volume knob on your guitar to push it a little further, great channel. Of course, if you put a pedal in front of this channel, you can get some really nice overdrive tones using your favorite pedal. But one thing that I noticed about this amplifier is that there's so much variety in terms of uh, amount of gain between the first, second, and third channel that I was rarely using or having to use my overdrive pedals or my distortion pedals because I can get plenty of saturation right here from the amplifier. Now, a Mesa has its own distinct sound. So, you know, a lot of times people are trying to compare the Mesa sound to a Marshall sound or to a Fender sound or whatnot. And in my opinion, Mesa has its own distinct sound. So it doesn't really get you into that Fender territory or that Marshall territory, although it does provide good, good cleans and you know very good overdrive tones. It's not the same as what you would hear, say in a Marshall, for example. Um, this amplifier comes with two, well, you can actually put three different types of tubes in here, but mostly it ships with EL34s or six L6s. You can also put in um, six V6 tubes if you wanna lower down the volume from 50 watts, if that's too much for you. But I find that personally, I prefer the six L6 tubes because I just find they're, they're a little bit fuller they have a little bit more uh, clean headroom. Um, and to me, they just sound a little bit better than the EL34s. The good news is though, if you wanna experiment with tubes, the amplifier will allow you to swap tubes and you don't necessarily have to rebias anything. It's a self-biasing amplifier. So Mesa made it really easy for everyone to swap tubes. Just put them in and you're, you're ready to go, as long as they're a matched pair. Um, so for me, the, uh, the six L6s that I have in here really sound great. Now, um, in terms of saturation and tone, the good news is that the amplifier with the master volume for each channel and the overall master allows you to dial in a lot of different types of uh, headroom. So you can actually get full saturation or you can actually back down the master volume in say the low channel or the high gain channel and then pump up the output over here to get uh, a different flavor of, of drive, which is uh, punchy yet less, maybe a little bit less saturated overall. So I was really impressed by the, the, the range of sounds that I was getting and the uh, low gain channel from what I hear was taken from um, the Electrodyne. And for me, the Electrodyne really had a very great sounding gain channel because it wasn't too much or too little. It was really in the, uh, the right proportion, I would say, um, for lack of better words. It was like perfect because you can always boost it if you wanted to or bring it down a little bit with your volume knob and it would fit perfectly for a big variety of different sounds and that's mostly where i live with this amplifier is 
the low gain channel and I just dial back uh, what I need using the volume knob on the guitar. The clean, very nice clean. Uh, you can get spanky tones with this amplifier. And that was one thing that I, I, I felt was lacking with the Electrodyne. It was very beefy and fat sounding, but it didn't do the spank with a Strat very well. And this amplifier does that extremely well. And if you want full gain, the this is, uh, the one of the most uh, one of the amplifiers that Mesa has put out with probably the most gain so if you're looking for gain this amplifier will definitely deliver it in spades so let's look at the back of the amplifier for now because there's a whole bunch more happening in the back of the amplifier that you can appreciate also uh, before we do that it also comes with a foot switch. Uh, most Mesa amps come with foot switches. This one is a very complete foot switch. As you can see, it's got six toggles. So basically it allows you to toggle reverb, the onboard reverb, your effects loop, uh, your solo boost, channel one, two, and three. So you basically can do it all with this uh, foot switch. It's got a MIDI type cable on the side of it. Very robust metal enclosure uh, one thing i always always mention about mesa is that their amps are made like tanks they really are i mean they weigh a ton but they're built to last and you know i don't think you're gonna work you have to worry about any type of uh, issues when you're playing anywhere with these amplifiers they're really made to last so let's have a look at the back of the amplifier and see what type of good very usable features Mesa has put in there. Okay, so now we can clearly see the back of the amplifier and you'll see that the enclosure actually is open. So you can, you do have access to the tubes, but you do have to uh, kind of reach in back there. Uh, the 12 AX7 tubes are accessible. You can take them out. There's enough room in here to work. The, uh, the 6L6 tubes are protected by this grill kind of a, a enclosure so that you don't accidentally knock the tubes, which is, I think is a great idea. And this comes off, there's a couple of clips on the inside of this that you can actually pull it off to have access to the tubes. The reverb tank is way in the back. You probably won't be able to see it, but it's a it's it's a it's a small reverb tank. It's not very big. There was room inside the amplifier for a full size reverb, so I'm not quite sure why Mesa decided to go with um, a mini sized one. Um, the Electrodyne that I had originally, uh, previous to this amplifier, had a full size reverb and it sounded great. But this this reverb does sound good. Now let's look at what we have in the back here because there's a whole bunch of ins and outs and I'll zoom in for you in a minute. So obviously we have a fuse, very important to have a fuse there just in case something happens to protect the, the circuitry. Now on the right hand side here we have three independent reverb uh, tone knobs. And so each one of these is for each one of the channels that you're working with, which is really a great feature to have because obviously if you want to have some reverb on the clean channel, uh, maybe a little less on the, the, the low gain and maybe none on the high gain, you can do that very easily. You can, um, you can tailor it in to exactly what you want to use. Um, there's also a couple of switches here. One of the switches that is protected with a ring, uh, it's a very important one to protect because this actually um, gives you the choice of switching your tubes. When you switch your tubes between EL34s or 6L6s, uh, you have to actually switch this bias toggle switch here, make sure it's on the right one. So if you're using 6L6s, you want to make sure it's in the 6L6 mode and not EL34 or 6V6s because the bias will be different. Now, you also have a switch here to either have your reverb on or have it off uh, and control it via the foot switch. 
so it gives you options there and the same thing here so you have the option of keeping your solo boost on or having it off via the foot switch it's up to you of course we have an effects an effects return and send loop and what's really cool here is that we can also turn that on or off so if we want to bypass the effects we can do that as well we can also do that via the foot switch um, obviously here we also have a selection switch for the cabinet uh, and what uh, option we have there for either 4 ohms or 8 ohm cabinets then here we have our speaker out so this goes to your cabinet and another cool feature this amp allows us to use is it also has a speaker emulation so we can actually turn the speaker on or off so even though it's plugged in so it does provide a load for the amplifier we can actually turn off the speaker so we don't actually hear it but it still provides a load for the amplifier so nothing gets damaged and the reason why they give you that option is because you also have a headphone out and a line out and both of these outputs allow you to have uh, a simulated speaker so there's another switch here which allows you to um, have an option between a vintage sound open sound or closed back and it basically emulates that so you can take this and go directly into your DAW without necessarily playing through your speaker keep things very manageable at home and allow you to record the amplifier without necessarily having to mic it or you can just go through your headphones and play while you're home uh, if your kids are sleeping or the wife is sleeping uh, you're still able to enjoy the amplifier using the headphone and it'll also emulate the cabinet for you so it's, it's really great very versatile then of course there's a ground lift um, there's the cab clone di so you also have a balanced di out that you can use here to go into your daw for recording or go into your mixer or however you want to use it and then on the left most side of the amplifier you have your midi section here so the midi section allows you to use a midi foot switch and you have a midi in a mini through and mesa foot, uh, foot switch option as well so there's three different inputs here so this first one is where your foot the normal foot switch will plug in the other two are for midi through and midi in you can use a midi switch with this head to store your own patches so you can actually dial in the tones you want and store them there's a store switch here that you basically flick on and off to basically store it to your MIDI controller now if you're using something else for example if you have a head rush like I do the head rush also has options for example to be able to control the MIDI switching so you can actually use this amplifier with the effects built in to the head rush and have the head rush control the settings on the amplifier through the MIDI controllers which is fantastic I mean if you're playing a live situation you have it all you have the best of, of everything right there so you can see very clearly that the amplifier does offer a lot of features that are very practical there's no like gimmicky things here these are all features that you're gonna want to use and take advantage of um, so it's a really well thought out amplifier in terms of the way it's put together and what they're offering you now of course you know a lot of people will compare this amplifier to other amplifiers that Mesa has put out um, there's a lot of great amplifiers in their lineup right now um, and it just depends what kind of a flavor you want um, what kind of tonality that you want now I play mostly classic rock um, but I do play a, a wide variety of other tunes as well and I feel that this amplifier is able to uh, give me the tones that I need across the spectrum whether I'm playing more modern music more vintage music 
The amplifier is definitely able to uh, provide more of a vintage tone or more of a modern tone um, right from the front of the unit. You can dial that in very, very easily. And of course, with pedals, you can add additional flavor on top of what the amp can offer to get you basically everything you need. So when people ask me like, how does this amplifier compare to say a Friedman Dirty Shirley that I also own or some vintage you know, Fender uh, Plexis or my Brunetti Plexi Man, they're all very different. They're great, they're all very good amplifiers. The Mesa TC50 is a fantastic amplifier, but they all have slightly different tonality to them. And the Triple Crown to me, um, just is able to do a little bit more because it does have the flexibility of having the three channels where some of the other amplifiers that I have don't have that. Uh, a Marshall Plexi obviously is a one channel amp. The uh, Friedman Dirty Shirley also is a one channel amp. It doesn't have any MIDI switching capabilities. It doesn't have, uh, you know, options of switching the tubes. It doesn't have independent reverbs. It doesn't actually have reverb at all. So, and the Friedman actually costs a lot more than uh, you would be paying for the Mesa uh, TC50. So, does that mean I want to get rid of my Friedman? Not really, because the Friedman is a great amplifier in its own right. It just does stuff a little bit differently and it provides different tones. The TC50 provides great tones as well, but it just gives you a little bit more for your money, bang for your buck. I think you really can't go wrong with the TC50 in my opinion. Um, and it matches up very nicely to the different cabinets. So I tried these with a series of different uh, speakers. I tried it with a vintage 30 speakers. I tried it with um, some speakers from uh, Guitar Warehouse. They provide great speakers as well. And finally, I tried it in my cabinet here with 412s. Um, these are uh, vintage um, 12H65 speakers from Celestion. And to me, they all sounded great. I think the older speakers sound good for what I play. Uh, of course, you can probably mix and match and, and put other types of speakers such as green back speakers, cream back speakers, for example, I'm sure would also sound really good. I believe the, the um, combo that Mesa puts out with this particular uh, type of amplifier comes standard with uh, vintage 30s. So, you know, they selected that speaker for a specific reason. So you can definitely try out that type of speaker and see how it works for you. That doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be the best in terms of what you're looking for, but it's a great starting point. So to wrap up this episode, guys, in my opinion, the TC50 from Mesa, the guys at Mesa really hit this one out of the park. They produce a fantastic sounding amplifier once again, gives you all of the functionality, all of the flexibility you could want, even if you're the most picky guitarist out there, you know, everything that they've provided right out of the box is extremely usable. There's no gimmicks. It's built like a tank. You have the Mesa experience behind, uh, you know, the engineering. The team that puts these guys together know what they're doing. They've been around for a long time and they continue to surprise us very pleasantly with their new offers that come out. And um, if you guys haven't already tried this amplifier, do yourself a favor if it's in your local guitar shop plug into it, give it a whirl. I think you're gonna be really pleased by the amount of flexibility and the tones that you can get out of this amplifier. It really blew me away and that's why it's here. That's why I ended up buying it. Um, so that's all I need to say about this amplifier for now. Thank you for tuning in once again. As you probably have noticed, we're well over the 8,000 subscriber mark right now on our channel and I'm really happy to see that more of you are joining us on a regular basis and subscribing to the channel. Very pleased about that, thank you. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do because there'll be more great videos coming your way. And if you haven't already hit the little bell, hit that little icon so you'll be notified whenever I post some new videos like this one and you won't miss out on them. Until the next time, guys, please stay tuned, keep rocking, 
There'll be more great stuff coming your way.